unfortunately, many Christians don't know how to pray. And I'm thinking, how does religion work without prayer? How does belief work without prayer? And I'm today going to teach you exactly how to pray and how to pray so that you don't worship false gods with your prayer. First of all, let's know what a false god even is. Let's jump right in with practical advice. A false god is anything that your heart is devoted to that is not God. So that doesn't say that you can't desire anything but God. But it goes to say that if you worship something else than God with your heart, then you're basically worshiping a false god when you're worshiping a car, when you're worshiping a status object, when you're worshiping a Rolex or a Lamborghini or whatever then you are worshiping a false god and you're turning away from Jesus, essentially. So don't pray for these things because then you are basically saying, God, you are the way to these things. But what you should say is, God, these things will lead me closer to you. And you might start to understand how to really pray throughout the whole video. So just watch the whole thing in order. I've put it in an order for a reason. Now, you pray like this. You pray in a way in which you tell God what you know is more than what I know. Just by experience, just by the mass, the sheer, like the sheer mass of your experience, you are smarter than me. You have hundreds of thousands of years of experience with us humans and you know exactly how we will behave which is the reason why you can guide my life anywhere you want. Because you know that I believe in you and you know that the people who believe in you will be saved. And you wrote this in your book, you promised this and you want this, right? God wants to save you. And then as the next thing, imagine yourself as a rabbit in a garden and your master is the guy who lets you sit free from your cage. And I discovered this analogy when I was playing with my own rabbit on in the garden that is right out there. And I thought to myself, well, I want this rabbit to experience how the garden is. I want him to look at every corner and everything, but I want him to, but I want to keep him from the bad areas, right? I don't want him to, to find a snake or something. So I guarded him. I guarded him and I wondered, Hey, if this rabbit could talk to me, what would make me resent the habit? What, what would make me resent the rabbit? What would make me do all these things? And just imagine if I was a rabbit exploring the garden of life, which earth really is, how would God want me to behave? Would he want me to go further in the direction he told me not to go in? Would he want me to commit sins? No. Would he want me to experience life? Yes, absolutely. God isn't a thing, isn't a rule set that requires you to be very strict. God is more the, 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 the rescuing from being strict. You can commit any sin you want, ask for forgiveness and it will be forgiven. It's not like some, some government or something you do well for 10 years and you murder someone once and then you're in jail or something and you can't ask for forgiveness with God. It's different. You can ask for forgiveness. And if you really mean it, he will forgive you. Of course, every fool can say, Oh, why don't I just party and have sex my whole life and then turn to God in the end. And everyone can say this. Everyone can say, God, please forgive me. Blah, 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 blah. But this point brings me to the first real point of the prayer after not worshiping false gods is to pray with your heart. If you don't pray with your heart, your prayer is basically just talking to yourself. You see, God listens to your heart because everything else, everything humans can see is what God is, is, what, is what God also sees. But what he really pays the most attention to, or at least that's what I think is your heart. Your heart is the most important thing and your heart determines if you get rescued or not. Watching Jesus reels doesn't change anything about your heart. You have to devote your heart to God and you have to pray with the things that are in your heart. Just think, what does my heart want? Does my heart really want this business? Maybe yes or no. Does my heart want this, this Rolex or does, is it just my mind? Is it just the flesh or the heart? You have to know the difference between those two. 
because there is a difference. You can say something and believe something else. Now, the next thing you need to know about prayer is that you cannot lie in prayer. Don't lie in prayer because prayer is literally talking to your creator. If you lie to him, who can you be honest to really? Just imagine the rabbit lying about where he is. God knows exactly where you are because he sees your heart. He knows where you will be headed. And you just need to imagine this, right? God, I, th I think this is the way that I can explain it in the best way. God sees your heart and he sees, okay, his heart wants a woman right now. And he knows, okay, because of the things that, in, that happened in his past, when he finds, finds this woman, he's going to instantly take her if he can. But that woman isn't good for him. So I won't answer his prayer right now. And this is also the next topic of this video. So don't pray for, for physical things. Pray that God will not deliver you into sin. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for gratitude. Pray so you can praise God. Pray so that God handles you off on his way he you can pray for all these things but if God does something he is gonna do it because he wants to do it he's gonna do it because he knows that it is right and that it is true and praying for a thing can sometimes be okay right you can sometimes say God I really want this I really want this please search in my heart and find if this is gonna be bad for me or good and give it to me if it's good for me and hold it from me if it's not good for me. And by doing this, by saying exactly what I just told you, by saying this in your heart, you will not say, God, I'm wiser than you, so give me this thing, I know how I'll handle it. Basically, you're basically saying, God, I know that you know how I will handle this thing. I know, I trust in you, that you will only give me the things that are good for me. But if you say, God, I want this Rolex, I want this Lambo, I want this woman, I want this money, you're basically saying, I am smarter than you, my God. And that can lead you down a very dark path because if you say you're smarter than your creator, you just, you just shot yourself in the leg. You're not smarter than God. You can't be smarter than God. There is no way you're smarter than him. No way. But if you say, I want this woman now, you're saying, I don't want to hear your plan. I want mine. I want to be my plan. And you're not choosing him. You're basically choosing yourself above God, which is a sin. A sin is every time you say, God, I know what you want from me, but you're not, but I don't want to do it. I want myself. So the way you implement all the things that I told you today is you simply pray a prayer called the Father Hours. And I'll put the, and I'll put the whole prayer that you can read through in the description of this video so that you can pray through this yourself. This prayer contains everything we talked about today and as an addition to that I'm going to give you the implementary step of every single day watching the lessons God wants to teach you. Now have a nice day. May it be blessed. And master your mood.